So, oh, everybody's Irish on St. Patrick's Day, right? <laughs> Discussing that earlier with Renee Newman. Yes, that is the case. We like to say we are anyway. That got me thinking about genealogy and DNA testing for genealogy and all that sort of thing. And joining us now is the Director of University Archives at Western Michigan University, Sharon Carlson. And I'm told, Sharon, that you're the one that the students come to when they want to know about genealogy. Is that true? Well, there's a bit of truth in that. And not just the students, but uh, we also are a community resource. So we have a number of uh, people coming in to our research center at the Zang Legacy Collection Center at Western Michigan University. And sometimes they're trying to determine if they're Irish or they're just um, trying to figure out where their family tree began. That is very interesting. And uh, what do you usually do first when you hear that? Well, you have a couple of things you t should do, maybe two, maybe three. Um, the first thing that I always recommend is uh, sit down with every relative, you know, include your mom, include your dad. If you have grandparents, uh, aunts, uncles, you know, greats, great greats, and start asking them questions mm. about uh, what they know and ask for names. And in the case of, uh, you know, searching female ancestors, Try and get their married names, but try and get the names uh, when they weren't married. And, you know, just start writing this down. Uh, sometimes it's fun to actually tape record it, and then if you miss something or maybe years later, you know, you'll really treasure that recording. So um, asking your family members is the first thing. Uh, I think the second thing is looking at the paper trail. And at least for the last uh, couple hundred of years, most of us have probably left the paper trail uh, you know, we've been born, and it shows up, it's announced somewhere, whether it's a public record, a church record. Uh, similarly, when you die, uh, it may be announced in a newspaper, there may be an obituary, it may show up in church records, and everything in between, marriages, births of children, and uh, so most people have left a paper trail. You pay taxes on property, you leave a paper trail. Hmm. Or if you get in trouble with the law, you leave a paper trail. <laughs> uh, I think now it's becoming much more popular to uh, jump to the scientific study, and that is looking at DNA. And, of course, DNA can tell you a great deal about you know, where your family may have uh, migrated from, and it takes into account you know, hundreds if not thousands of years. Yeah, we're going to talk about that more when we come back in just a second because that is really interesting. And I've heard some people react to uh, having looked at those DNA results with some surprise. And we'll talk about that coming up in a few minutes with Sharon Carlson, WBCK. WBCK, it's St. Patrick's Day when everybody's Irish, but are we really? And we're talking about genealogy today with Sharon Carlson, the director of University Archives at Western Michigan University. She has some practice at helping folks uh, figure this out. You mentioned DNA, Sharon. Now, I would imagine that uh, this is a pretty good truth as far as, D as DNA and, and uh, one's genealogy is concerned. It's pretty foolproof, isn't it? Well, yes and no, and uh, sometimes that depends on whether you're male or female. Oh. Um, you know, there are different types of DNA. There's what's called a Y DNA. Uh, that is what every man gets from his father, who got it from his father, who got it from his father. And uh, the Y DNA, if you're female, um, you don't have that. So hmm. you have automatically missed probably 50% or more of your family. Uh, now, there is a way around it. Um, if you're testing and, and you want to find out about the male side of your family and you're female, uh, obviously your father would be a good source, your grandfather or your brother. And, in fact, I have done the uh, testing um, that the National Geographic does, mm -hmm. and it shows a wide, you know, very broad patterns of, of where, you know, my people came from. And I did the test initially, and I thought, well, I want to find out a little more. And so my father's no longer living, but uh, I do have a brother, and uh, I'm, he's not he's not into this at all. But <laughs> he knew I was curious enough, and so he managed, you know, I got him to take it. And uh, it showed some, you know, some variations, some differences. If anything, I think it confirmed that 
uh, basically, you know, my mother and my father, even though, you know, one has lived, my father was, uh, you know, lived in this country, his family lived in this country for several generations, and my mother was, is the immigrant, uh -huh. uh, but yet their people came from kind of similar parts of the world. Uh, of course, all people carry what's known as the mitochondria or the mtDNA, and uh, this is, you know, what's passed down from a mother to her children. And so, um, you know, males who take this test, you know, they will find out about, you know, their mother and their father. Um, there are some testing that look at autosomal DNA, and that's sometimes called, you know, the, the genealogy DNA, right. and it's, um, it's inherited from both your parents. And I have known, um, I have known people who, you know, they have taken a test, uh, I know Ancestry features one, and they have sometimes found known relatives because you can enter this into Ancestry, and oh if you are agreeable to sharing your results uh, and others are, you know, they, they will match you. So, you know, it, it will tell you different things depending on, you know, the kind of test you do and, and of course, depending on whether you're male or female. So the the ancestry information coupled with the DNA results that you may wish to share could end up introducing you to family members you didn't know you had. Yes, that's why. And I, I've known some um, also some adoptees who have, you know, identified half siblings this way too. Uh huh. That I was going to bring that up because uh, this can get complicated. For example, my grandfather was adopted, so he's not he was not really a pilot. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and we don't know anything about, uh, his natural father. So when you run into situations like that, uh, the DNA probably uncovers things that we, we were not able to know before. Oh, absolutely. Yes. That's interesting. And then what about name changes? I mean, do you run into that when you talk to people, for example, uh, my great grandfather changed the family name when they came to the United States by one letter, but he changed it. So that then throws off the trail a little bit, doesn't it? Oh, yes, absolutely. And I've, uh, I've encountered that in my own family. Uh, these are Germans who uh, Americanized uh, a name. Yeah. And uh, I actually know a couple of people. They are cousins. And uh, the name change, uh, the spelling was done literally within the last 80 years mm -hmm. and their name is sort of spelled the same way but it's off by one letter and you know those can be uh you know really really difficult challenges they, they call them uh you know genealogical brick walls yeah and sometimes you know that's that's a paper trail kind of issue and you know sometimes you can figure out where that name change happened uh did it happen when they were you know, trying to become a citizen or when they got to this country, you know, their their name was, you know, just so difficult. Uh, and, and there's really, there's there's nothing tried and tested about that, but it does happen. And, uh, you know, first and middle names getting mixed around and, uh, of course, record keeping. Uh, you think, I don't know that anybody thinks the government keeps great records, but, <laughs> you know, the census is proof that, at least the census takers, they frequently, um, you know, they missed people, they missed the names, uh, they misspelled names, uh, all kinds of, um, you know, misinformation out there. Sure, lots of potential challenges to the truth. Yes. <laughs> We're talking with Sharon Carlson today, Director of University Archives at Western Michigan University, who spends some time looking into and helping folks look into genealogy. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. WBCK, a few more minutes with Sharon Carlson, Director of University Archives at Western Michigan University. We're talking about genealogy on St. Patrick's Day when everybody says they're Irish. Uh, and this the whole DNA part, which is, uh, it, I, I, would you venture to say it's revolutionized genealogy? Oh, I think so. I and I actually think that people that maybe had less interest in genealogy, but more you know interest in science have been drawn in too. Now, let me make sure I understand what you said, that Depending on whether you're male or female, the DNA results may not provide the whole picture. Did I get that right? Oh, that's absolutely true. So you have to really do this in a couple of different steps then if you want the full picture. 
yes, if you're female. Now, if you're male, you, you will get the full picture in most of these geneal- or the uh, DNA testing. But if you're female, uh, then you need to get a father, a grandfather, a brother, or, you know, an uncle, some male relative, um, you know, on the male side of the line, and then you would get the full picture. Mm-hmm. I have had a couple of friends who have been surprised to know some of the uh, DNA information they've gleaned from this test. Uh, one of them said, I have German, there's some German in me, I didn't even know that. Uh, do you hear that a lot? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, and I have to say, you know, I thought I would find more German in my own line, and uh, I found more Northern European, which hmm. sort of surprised me. But people migrate today. Uh, we don't think that people historically migrated, but, but they did, you know, for some of the same reasons uh, you know, we do today, uh, you know, seeking better opportunity, getting away from a bad situation, you know, economic or agricultural upheaval. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, many Irish uh, came to the U.S. Uh, the middle of the 19th century because of the Great Potato Famine. Oh, boy. There's something we haven't talked about in a long time. <laughs> no, no, we haven't talked about that. If, if you look at one of, uh, you know, America's you know, first families and, you know, very much identified, you know, with, with uh, Ireland. Of course, that would be the Kennedy family. Mm-hmm. And they trace their origins back to that potato famine. Wow. So if somebody wants to get a DNA test for genealogical purposes, how do they do it? They just go to their doctor? How does this work? Well, there are a lot of online tests, and that's another thing that's become much, much more easy. Hmm. Um, literally, you, you get a kit, you swab the insides of your mouth, uh, you put it in, uh, you know, they usually provide something for you to return that DNA sample to, uh, a little vial with you know, some fluid that preserves that DNA, and you send it off. And, you know, generally, uh, you know, it's also very confidential. You get identifying information, and uh, eventually you go into your computer, and, and there it is. Do they actually ask you your name and all of that? Uh I think it's all done, uh, at least I know the National Geographic, it's not attached to names, it's I attached see. to numbers, yeah. and you've got to hope that you, you've remembered what number <laughs> you provided. Right. And I'm not important. as familiar with Ancestry. Okay. That's interesting. You know, the, the Internet has changed this a lot, and I guess Ancestry is one of the, the biggest examples of that. Uh, but you have to know what your history was, or at least some of it, but does Ancestry do a decent job of filling in the blanks for you? I think people who have uh, used the DNA, I think they've been satisfied with it. And, you know, Ancestry is the one that advertises the most. There are free sites out there, though, that are, you know, if you just want to get started, you know, there's a great site called Family Search. And a lot of libraries have Ancestry. So if you're still in that, um, you know, seeking of the paper records, uh, you could probably find out if Ancestry is right for you uh, just by visiting a public library. And uh, I have to say I'm more familiar with Kalamazoo resources, but, you know, the Kalamazoo Public Library has Ancestry. We have Ancestry here at the Archives and Regional History Collections. Uh, when I think of the Battle Creek area, I think of the Helen Warner branch as the, the go-to mm-hmm. place for local history. All right. Well, that's good to know. And, uh, I think we've piqued a lot of interest with this. It's just fascinating how technology has changed this. By the Absolutely. way, before we go, I want to give you a chance to talk about the uh, the archives and, and the Legacy Center at Western. This is a relatively new, uh, uh, certainly new building, but the project, I suppose, has been going along for a while, hasn't it? Oh, we've been uh, one of the best-kept secrets since the 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> But we yeah. are in a new building, and uh, the new building is, is very accessible. You know, we're on Oakland Drive between the uh, State Hospital and Howard Street. Mm-hmm. Uh, if our sign had an address, it would be 1650 Oakland Drive. We uh, serve the university community. We serve the public. And um, we are open for people wanting to do um, genealogical research. And it's amazing how much... You know, academic research sometimes involves genealogy. Uh, you know, some of my own research, I've looked at uh, women's clubs in Michigan, and I've also tried to determine, 
the makeup of some of these members of the club. So I was doing genealogy research for, you know, what might be considered a serious academic topic. Yeah, that's right. And m- maybe in our day-to-day travels, we don't realize how, how broadly that can affect us. Yes. Wow. Well, that's very fascinating. I suppose we could do a whole other show on that. <laughs> well, call me back sometime, and we will. We'll do it. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. Nice to talk to you, Great Richard. to talk to you, too. Sharon Carlson is the Director of University Archives at Western Michigan University.